Hello, and welcome to the MTAS YouTube channel. My name is Jordan Smith, and I'm a current Board of Directors Chair. Today, we have the absolute pleasure of interviewing John F. Barnes. For those of you who don't know, John F. Barnes PT, LMT, NCTMB is an internationally recognized physical therapist, lecturer, author, and the leading authority on myofascial release. John began developing his approach to myofascial release and teaching seminars in the 1970s. He has trained over 100,000 therapists and physicians in his highly successful myofascial release approach. So please enjoy the sit down with John as we discuss how he came to develop his approach to myofascial release through his own injuries and some of the aspects that make this form of therapy unique. Um, I guess the first question, John, would be, how did you originally develop your principles of myofascial release? Hi, Jordan. And well, I, uh, I graduated from the University of Pennsylvania in 1960 as a physical therapist and uh, did traditional therapy for 10 years or so. And uh, I was an athlete. I used to um, run, I skied, drove motorcycles. I um, got involved in competitive karate, competitive weightlifting. And uh, I pretty much loved competition and motion. And uh, I went to physical therapy school because I was enamored with the mind-body complex. And when I got there, they had no clue. And we're talking 60 years ago. They, I don't know how it was in Canada, but they still have no clue. The mind is like a bad, bad word in healthcare, you know, not just physical therapy. So anyway, um, I went down to the gym to work out one day, and uh, nobody was there to spot me. And I was squatting with somewhere over 300 pounds. But I got to the point where I couldn't get up. So I was a gymnast when I was younger, and I decided I'd do a back roll to get out of that, forgetting that when you have a 300-pound bar in your hand, it doesn't let go. So I crashed into the ground with tremendous force, and I herniated the disc at L5, and I ripped some ligaments in the sacroiliac area and lumbar areas, and uh, I just it was I was numb from the waist down. Now. I'll come back to this in a little bit, but this is one of the principles I teach in my effects release, but I didn't have words for it then. The numbness started to wear off. I could barely move my legs. And as the numbness wore off, the pain began. It was horrible. Eventually, I got my legs to move a little bit. I can laugh about it today, but I had crawled out of the gym and, uh, in that instant, when I fell, it took away those things I loved, motion, competition, as I said earlier. Life became quite a struggle, constant pain. Um, I tried every form of therapy, every form of massage known to mankind. Nobody wanted to get better more than I did. So eventually, I went to a friend's house. Uh, a friend was a radiologist, and he invited me to ski up in his ski house but I couldn't ski and he saw how much pain I was in so he encouraged me to go see a friend of his that was an orthopedic surgeon so they thought I should have a spinal fusion not a laminectomy but a fusion because I was an athlete I did that and that helped the pain but I still hurt a lot and I still wasn't moving too well so out of total frustration what I would do just lay on my living room floor and push into the areas that hurt or felt really hard to me. And I was still very strong. I was trying to bull my way through. When I was younger, as most of us, my intuition was very strong. And then, like most of us, school kind of beats the intuition out of you because you're supposed to be logical, you know. My intuitive voice started to talk to me and tell me. So I think the trauma opened up my intuition again. It started to tell me to lighten up. And I noticed as I lightened up, I was getting better results. And then eventually I was told to take more time. It got to the point where I was making tremendous results finally. 
And I was having these strange sensations, not just at the arch insertion of muscle, but all over my body. It's what I call the fascial voice today. And so I started to realize that maybe what I was dealing with was the fascial system. And I've been asked to give t lectures down at the Osteopathic College in Philadelphia to TMJ specialists and other physicians. I had access to their library. I found a stack of information on the fascial system about that thick. I also found a pile of dust on that about that thick. It hadn't been touched in decades. The founder of osteopathy, Dr. Andrew Still, had some really incredible insights into the fascial system. But he was saddled with the, what's called the osteopathic form of myofascial release, which is what other people are calling myofascial release too. It's an attempt to force a system that can't be forced. So temporary results. And this, I think, as most of you can recognize, is that unfortunately, as great as massage feels, most times the results are temporary. The same goes for physical therapy, occupational therapy. All of our, our education, no matter what profession you're in, has focused on symptoms. The symptoms are just the tip of the iceberg. So what I've seen over the years is it's the fascial system that's the cause of the symptoms. But nobody was dealing with the fascial system properly. Um, I guess that's a good segue into the next question where you speak about the art of mild fascia release and being able to feel into the barrier of the patient's system and waiting there for meaningful change. Um, could you talk about that barrier? Because that's something that we don't really get taught in school either is the barrier aspect of the fascial release. Yeah. Yeah. Um, most forms of massage basically are gliding over it or pushing into it with brute force. And then what that does is set up mental protection. So that's a bad word in healthcare, you know, so forgive me. <laughs> but as you get into my fast release, I know you have deeply, you can't ignore the mind. And so that this is why the pressures are so important. Uh, brute force, as I said, doesn't work except for tempor temporary results. And so there's a feel to it. The fastest system is a glide system. And so that one of the things we do is to analyze tissue texture. We feel for areas that are hot, hard, or tender, or do not move, do not glide, in other words. Where the glide stops is where the restriction is, and... We put gentle pressure initially into that system. Then as we learn to quiet ourselves down, which is what I call being centered, you start to feel their mind activate and it starts to pull you in or push you away. So you're actually taking a ride on their mind. It's true mind reading. And the problem is a lot of copycat courses are popping up. I call my fast release. But they're doing the old form of myofascial release, not just osteopathic. All the forms of, of uh, myofascial release, uh, ba basically, again, are forcing a system that can't be forced. There's an art to this. And so as you learn to feel that restriction, you wait, and you wait, and you wait. We have, in our world today, about 8 billion people. And there's 8 billion different fascial strain patterns. So this is truly personalized care. The problem is we're taught protocols, but that's one size fits all. The protocol that we learn to follow has nothing to do with the patient on the treatment table. You and I were basically taught to do the impossible. So. <laughs> well, that's true. With your approach to the myofascial release, you talk often about structural unwinding and rebounding being the main triad. Can you explain a little bit about each of those and how they really mesh well together? Yeah, let's start with structural. That would take you see that. Let's talk about the time factor because it, it's so important. Think about all the things that you've been doing, not just you, but all of you. And, and did you ever wait in an area without moving for 90 to 120 seconds? No. Probably not. It's only about 90 to 120 seconds that the collagenous barrier even begin to release. See, that's what submission healthcare is engaged in the collagenous barrier. 
But then that's only the beginning. Then you have to wait another three to five minutes. In other words, well over five minutes for the release to occur on the deep level that will last. That's a hard thing for us all initially to learn to be quiet long enough. And then we might come back and maybe talk about Channel 3 and Channel 5 because it has a lot to do with that, you know. So the structural release is barrier upon barrier. It's totally unique to each person. One of the things, as you know, as I say in the seminars, is find a pain, look elsewhere for the cause. Then overtraining has been symptomatic, but that's just effects. When effects release gets the cause and effect relationship, the totality of the situation. So it, it just takes time. It, we have to learn, as therapists, we have to learn how to control our mind and to focus on what we're doing, but with a very open focus. We have this healing energy in us. I don't know how things are up in Canada, but I know in the southern United States, you don't want to stay away from the word energy, too. That's a bad, bad word. We're energetic beings. And it um, goes back to the work of Einstein. Oh, can you imagine healthcare ignored the incredible genius of Einstein? You know, you've all heard of E equals EMC squared. What that means is solidity is an illusion. The problem is that when we go through trauma, the ground substance and the fluid that lies within it, which is called the ground substance, which has also been ignored, basically starts to become more and more viscous. And over time, it turns into a solidified mass capable of pressures up to 2,000 pounds per square inch. That's crushing pressure. And the important thing is that none of that shows up in any of the standard testing, x-rays, myelograms, CAT scans, blood work, and all that. So it's been missed for eons. And so we learned an inequated way of viewing the human being. Einstein said everything is energy different frequencies and vibration of energy. If you go back further in time to Nikola Tesla, the reason you and I are communicating this way, the reason we have light in our rooms is because of Tesla, incredible genius. He said the same thing as Einstein, everything is energy, different frequencies of vibration of energy. So maybe it's time we stop ignoring the reality that we all know. So, so, it turns out there's this life force we have in us, which is energy. We give it a lot of different names. Prana, chi, goes on and on and on. But they're all describing the same energy. It's that energy that keeps us alive. It's that energy that keeps us healthy. And so when we go through trauma, as the fascial barriers begin to thicken, it starts to block that energy, literally down to the cellular level. It creates this thing we call this ease. Open up the word dis-ease, lack of ease. And what were the ancients referring to? Basically, the energy, which is consciousness, has been blocked, and that creates severe health problems in us. You talked about the triad of myofascial release. Yes. So beyond the structural, we also do something called myofascial unwinding. So the therapist is taught how to learn to tune into the patient and the patient, you'll feel as they quiet down, and if they trust you, this goes back to the channel three, channel five concept. If they start to take their brakes off, the body starts to spontaneously move. And as it moves, somehow it's finding positions in space of past trauma. That's another huge missing link in healthcare. Nobody paid attention to that. Just think about it. When you were traumatized, you were in a position of space. One of the examples I give is imagine you're walking across the street and you turn your head and you see a car coming at you. There's a point when you realize it's going to hit you. You go into total tension. So we have this ability to leave our body. Part of us leaves our body at that moment to numb us out to help us get through the ordeal. This survival mechanism is so important because it saves your life and nobody paid attention to it. Every animal and every human has it. Anyway, I get hit by the core. There's a position in space. Most of our traumas occur in motion. 
I go to I go into the ground. There's another position of space. I leave some more. Then the damn car runs over you. There's a big one. So these are somehow imprinted in our energy field. And so as that occurs, your mind is locked into protection. This is why most other forms of therapy, because they don't pay attention to the mind, and talking isn't dealing with the mind. This is very simplistic, but I think a very practical way of looking at our consciousness. All of our education was based on what I call Channel 5, our intellect, our rational side. And that would be fine if it worked. It's not working. No healing occurs in Channel 5. No about health care is based on it. All healthcare is about control and order. You have to let go of control to go into this deeper level of consciousness, which you can call your subconscious. I call it channel three. So what my fast release does, the beauty of my fast release and the power is it switches us from channel three, your intellectual side, into channel three, which is your healing zone, your intel your instincts, your intuition. That's where we heal. It does it very safely, it's totally safe, efficiently and effectively. It's what I call our feeling and intelligence. If we have this deeper level of intelligence that makes it like an itch. It's so important to our existence. Neuroscientists have recently discovered that the database available to us in Channel 3 is in excess of 10 million to 1. Wow. That become like Channel 5. We learned this minuscule level of consciousness. In fact, I'm sure in school, I remember them saying that's only your intuition. It just deprives you of the most valuable faculties we were born with. Another word for all of that is wisdom. You were born with tremendous wisdom. And so what have this helps us to do is remove the blockages, the programming we all received, in our schooling, in our society, families um, basically limited our consciousness level. So as we go through treatment, we're not only relieving pain, we're restoring function in a very profound way. We're eventually getting to the point where we get in touch with our wisdom. That can change our life for the better. It's kind of a long-winded answer, wasn't it? No, it was a great answer. Because it, I think Channel 3 and Channel 5 is... You know, it's a very important aspect of the treatment and how we proceed in the treatment room, even as therapists, because I remember in school, you have a protocol. And then I remember after my first seminar, you threw that all out the door. And it took me a long time to get fully adjusted into that channel three, especially during treating. And just go in and trust what I feel, what is kind of speaking to me. And I think that was a great answer to explain it to people how channel three and channel five differentiate um, you always talk about the fascial system creating a straitjacket effect within our bodies. Yeah. What can cause the fascial restriction and how does it relate to that straitjacket effect? You all have your own straitjacket. It doesn't matter how smart you are. It doesn't matter what form of therapy you've had except for true myofascial release. It doesn't matter what medication you take. The straitjacket remains. That's the problem. Healthcare ignored the straitjacket. It didn't have any proper principles to release the pressure of the straitjacket. It's only when we release the pressure of the straitjacket does healing commence, authentic healing. So we have to get past this stuff of temporary results. It's not acceptable anymore. It's not necessary. Rebounding is an oscillatory motion. You start rebounding if somebody would just gently, it's a rolling motion, like a roll, initially like you're rolling a barrel. With my fascia, you always approach the person very slowly, very gently, and then you st I start this motion of rebounding. I gradually increase till I feel a little resistance at end range. You don't go through the resistance either. People love it. It feels really great. We rock our babies. Most people like uh, rocking chairs or hammocks or the ocean. There's something about so soothing and therapeutic about this rocking motion. And it seems to diminish the neural activity that is set on hyperactive in most people to get stuck in that mode. The rebounding is something I do in every session. You can do a whole session of rebounding. Again, it's about feel. And you'll notice some areas are fluid and moving. Other areas feel like rock or leather. 
And so you work directly on those areas. But if that's not working directly on the earth, it doesn't work. That's telling you they're loaded with fear in there and past trauma. So we have this tissue memory thing that goes with this. It's because we've ignored the mind, we've ignored tissue memory. There's an old saying that time heals all wounds. That's not true. Time buries the wound deeper and deeper until you've had my fashion release. This, in a very non traumatic way, allows those old wounds, those horrible memories of those very bad experiences you've had, to come forth. And as it does, this iron grip that your mind has had, because your mind has been stuck in protection, even if the trauma happened 10, 20, 30 years ago. That's why we have temporary results. And it finally go through structural MFR, unwinding or rebounding, the mind lets go, because it feels safe again, finally. Yeah. Until then, it will not let go. It's doing its job. So that's kind of like the fight or flight and freeze response, and the myofascial work allows the thawing of the freeze response. That's right. Yeah. Yeah, the patient will shake at what you're mentioning, the thawing, is a flight, flight, or freeze response. And so that we too have, we have two basic ways of dealing with trauma. We either leave our body or you go into total tension. That's the freeze response. It's like the deer in the like kind of look. Up your way, it's a moose, right? So Yeah, we get yeah, more moose, but... <laughs> something like our Molson's beer. Until the flight, flight or freeze response is released... There's no healing possible. Your your mind loves you. Your mind is constantly taking care of you. But see, it creates what I call the broken record effect. Let's talk about the survival mechanism real quickly. Every human, every animal possesses it. So when something's been too intense for us, too scary or too painful, basically somehow our feeling intelligence leaves our body. The idea is to numb yourself out. If you go back to my weightlifting trauma, I laid it on the floor after the trauma, and I was numb from the waist down. So eventually, as the numbness came back in, the pain began. So it's important during my fashion release to feel whatever sensations come up. It's what I call therapeutic pain. If you go to my website, myfashionrelease.com, there's an article section and read the article on therapeutic pain. Because we have, and you're welcome to print it out for your patients and clients. It helps them to understand that nobody paid attention to therapeutic pain. So it's only when you feel therapeutic pain does healing finally begin. And how would you describe therapeutic pain compared to injurious pain? Well, acute injury pain can be very severe. Well, chronic pain is something that persists. It's not maybe as severe, but it's always there. It's in your way. It's capturing your attention constantly. It's limiting what you can do. There's an article I wrote also called <clears throat> Without Awareness is No Choice. When you're touching the patient as you're treating them, you're always feeling deeply into their body. And you're all capable of learning how to do that. So that as you're say, pushing into a barrier, if pain starts to come up, you have to educate your patient. It's okay to feel it. Because our society has basically spent so life running from pain, yes, taking too many drugs, too much liquor, too much activity, compulsive activity, anything so that we don't feel. Because we're definitely afraid of pain as if it's going to kill us. So you have to educate your patient that as it comes up, you have total control. All you ever have to do if something's too unpleasant is just say ease up or hold. And I will always respect you. So you're always feeling into their body. So as you're doing the release, if you start to feel them bracing, then you have to gently remind them because people don't listen well. That goes back to Channel 5. Channel 5 doesn't listen real well. Remind them that basically it's okay to soften into that. It's okay to feel now, if they can't do that, that's when you, the therapist, lighten up. So there's this feedback between the two of you constantly. It's a true art. And so that you always ease up or you always ease up when they ask you to. But as they feel the therapeutic pain, it doesn't have to be all at once because it can be pretty horrible for some people. But even if you feel it for a few seconds, 
some of the energy is stuck in there is letting go and letting go and letting go. And over time, after a while, it's gone. So it takes repetition for sure. How would you describe the time component in terms of doing a technique or treating somebody? Yeah, this is so important to bring it up now. So the pressures have to be correct. You always move slowly. If you move fast, even though you have good intentions, they go into protection. Yep. Your mind is always there. But we try to ignore it in healthcare, as I said, it's crazy. So anyway, you move in slowly, always gently, until you feel resistance. And in each seminar, we will deepen our ability to feel that resistance. And so the time can put, yeah, so you go in gently. And then when you engage the bear, there's a specific feel to it. And then you wait and you wait and you wait. So I mentioned before, you want to wait five minutes or longer. I know that's a little difficult for most people initially, but you'll get over that. And as you quiet yourself down, learn to center yourself. As the therapist, you enter this other world that is beautiful and amazing. What it does is actually you're getting treated as the therapist while you're treating them. And it helps you to clear out your agitation, internal agitation. Not just you, I'm talking about all of us. You know? yeah. <laughs> so somewhere around five minutes, a number of phenomena occur. They're absolutely essential for true healing. Around a five-minute period, a piezoelectric phenomena begins to occur. It's a well-known fact that if you put pressure into a crystal, it'll generate electrical flow. In our body, it's a bioelectrical flow. Piezoelectricity is a Greek word for pressure electricity. So our pressure is generating this flow. That then is coupled with something called mechanotransduction. What that means is our mechanical pressure then is also converted into bioelectrical flow. And very importantly, in the patient, it produces interleukin-8, which is our body's natural anti-inflammatory. This is very important. Because all the recent research on cancer, now the older, old form of research done on cancer turns out to be pretty wrong. And so what they've now deter determined there's more information and even traditional research is the cancer comes from a thwarted inflammatory response. As you know, inflammation is an important part of healing, but when it's thwarted, which is very common, that is stalled out, so to speak, it's shut down, then you get into what we're talking about, chronic pain or acute pain, restriction of motion, disease, because the information is not getting to the cellular level that needs it nor is the nutrition and fluid and all that. Mechanotransduction then eventually turns into something called phase transition. You and I were brought up as kids to believe that there were three phases of water. Water, ice, and vapor. Well, it turns out through the work of Dr. Gerald Pollack, one of the leading experts in fluid dynamics in the world, he's found a fourth phase of water. It's called structured water, or H3O2. And basically, you and I are basically liquid crystal. So there's a chaotic period in phase transition. This also goes back to something called system theory and chaos theory. And basically, that states that no change or growth or healing can occur unless there's chaos. So our role as therapist is to create this chaos. Because when you're doing myofascial release, it destabilizes the system. The protection is no longer necessary. Yeah. So as that occurs, you go through this chaotic period. And because we do have a mind, believe it or not, you will always reorganize at a higher level. So there's this roller coaster ride that occurs. This is why repetition is very important. And over time, the positive healing power that you all possess overcomes the negative protective responses that are no longer necessary. Yeah. It's blocked you from healing. And that goes back to your statement of healing is feeling. You kind of sometimes have to go into the ugly to come out of it in a better position. Yeah. You need to go to hell to get to heaven, basically. <laughs> Traditional therapy and all the great 
forms of massage that feel wonderful. I call it parking and chiropractic and osteopathy, but I call that parking lot therapy because they feel really good in the treatment room. Yeah, they do. Like, the time they get out to the damn parking lot, all the symptoms are back already before they even get the damn car. You know, it's craziness. So this is going to take you to another level of achievement. And it's so natural and so healthy. And so you have this, you create this beautiful connection from one human being and one animal to the other. It's very special. It, it, it is. It's very special. And it really, you know, I started to notice a trend even in my patients where a lot of it now is they've tried everything. And they're starting to hear about this myofascial release. And I mean, up here in Canada, we're getting a lot more momentum with the myofascial release, but it's amazing just to see the differences and, you know, the glow that pa our patients start to develop over the course of treatments. Yeah. And yeah. I hear nothing but good about you, by the way. I'm People very happy you. to hear that, John. I really love you. Uh, very, very, very honored. <laughs> A couple other last little questions here. Um, I always have a good talk with my patients about healing is feeling. And I, you did touch on that earlier. How would you kind of elevator pitch that to your patients? I know it's a little different at your clinics, but sometimes here, especially up here, you know, we have the patients that come in, want that nice, hard, deep pressure, yeah. which is a lot different than I would say is the the healing is feeling difference. Right, well, that nice, hard, deep pressure does have value. And we do some of that ourselves, as you know. Yeah. So that sometimes, basically, the old form of myofascial release comes out of different, like Rolfing and Heller work and Soma and all that. You know, a lot of different names for the same thing. <laughs> that, <laughs> but that is, that's the only thing that helps them for a little bit, at least, usually, you know. But it only breaks up the cross links. The structural part it has nothing to do with the memories, emotions, or consciousness that's embedded within every one of us. So if, my fascia release is very gentle. But there are times when you do need to drag your elbow up their back or do what I call a little or soft tissue mobilization. Because yeah. you have something really thick and really old that has great value. And then seeing they get the big old truck driver, and uh, nothing against truck drivers, but I mean, you know, big burly guys. They have, that's the only thing that they really want, you know. So they, what they do is they drive my elbow into them until they're gasping for air. Then I'll slip in some of the softer and before stuff. Yeah. And after a couple of sessions, hey, you know, that, that later stuff works pretty good too. I said, yeah, it does. Yeah. And we hear oftentimes in your seminars that, you know, the myofascial release principles our life principles. Can you elaborate on that for me, please? I think what this does, it seems to be different levels of intuition, which is another form of wisdom. Our intuition is the highest form of intellect there is, right, by the way. And as I said, school, it gets ridiculed. So you have to bypass all the stupid messages we got. And in each seminar, we go into deeper and deeper levels of consciousness and ways of accessing our intuition. The beauty of this, too, is that as you're treating somebody, you do your best when you're centered and your mind is quiet. So you're tuning deeply into your feeling intelligence. And that's sort of the doorway to the depth of consciousness and intuition. There's something out there you may have heard of called the Akashic Records. It's another word for universal wisdom. You and I possess the wisdom and intelligence of Michelangelo, Leonardo da Vinci, Einstein, Nikola Tesla. But it's been blocked by our programming, as I said earlier, and all these restrictions or unfelt emotions to get locked into our system. So um, as we tune into that, you somehow have guidance. I don't know what word you want to put on it. It doesn't really matter. But you, you finally get in touch with who you truly are and this incredible wisdom that we possess. And it helps to guide us in our life because when we're in Channel 5, our intellectual side, which most people are, we make a lot of our decisions out of fear. 
or somebody else's thoughts, not yours, you know. So when we finally tap into this universal wisdom, now we have guidance in our life. We start to make our decisions out of love and compassion and true mental clarity. So um, it's a very freeing experience. See, Channel 5 is not who you are. That's your false ego. There's an old saying that if you don't define who you are, somebody else will. That's what happened to us in our society. We don't realize that we're functioning out of most people's, other people's thoughts. Um, That's true. Maybe it's get in touch with us, real us, you know. Find our our essence, who we are, and or who we want to be. It's, you know, it's in my experience with your work that's probably the biggest reward i've ever gotten out of it is really finding who i was who i knew to be and obviously the support i have around me is just second to none so i you know that really helps as well but yeah that channel five channel three can be a real 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 cat fight at times <laughs> yeah. any advice for people that are just beginning the myofascial journey be patient. We all progress at a different level. Some people get to feel right away. Most takes a little time. But even even though you don't have the depth of feel yet, it'll still work better than most any other form of therapy. Don't be hard on yourself. There's some that maybe never get it. They're, they're stuck in their egos, you know. Yeah. You see them in the audience. Every They sort of stand out to me. You know, something about their energy field. But most get it, and they do a beautiful job. It's just, you have to be patient. But we've lost our patience in our society, especially down here. I don't know how your guy in Canada is doing, but it's a mess down here right now. You know? yeah. <laughs> Jeez. It's a rush. Everyone's, there's it's no Channel, that's there's Channel 5 run amok, you know. It's unbelievable, you know. <laughs> so In a big collective group session. <laughs> yeah, that's right, yeah. I had a, one of my instructors worked in the school system. In the United States, you're not allowed to touch kids anymore. Yeah. She had the worst kids in class. We were very frustrated. In the Maya Fashion Unwinding Seminar and the Rebounding Seminar, I teach you how to rebound yourself and how to unwind yourself. So right, driving to school one morning, she had an aha experience where she realized that she could teach these kids how to do some rebounding and unwinding without touching them. So she had the whole group do it every morning. They loved it. Within two months, they were the best kids in, in the school, academically and behaviorally. The whole school system has to get somehow get involved with this too. Yep. It's to help us develop as loving, caring human beings with all of the stuff that you see happening all the time. You know? I mean, Channel 5 is our fearful, negative, critical, judgmental sign. What a hell of a way to live. But you all have Channel 3. You were born that way. So you're taking back your birthright in a way. I like that. It's a very, very fitting. And, you know, I think a lot of people feel that there's no way or no hope or they can't change. It's who they are. But, you know, through all of this, anything really is possible. I mean, your recovery yeah. from your injury, your discovering of this, the hundreds of thousands of lives you've affected positively. You know, there always is a chance. There's always hope if they're willing to take that first step. That hope, that's a good word. I think my fashion release gives us hope. Yeah. Like you said, you and I get these patients from all over the world. Nothing's worked for them for years. And all of a sudden, you don't have to sell my fashion release to your clients. They get it instantaneously. It's important to the recovery. There's something about the feel of it. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for today, John. It was an honor to do this. And do you have any con thoughts in conclusion? No, I just uh, I just hope more and more people get involved with my fast release. It greatly enhance your practice, and it's been a real pleasure knowing you. Oh, You're really great. So, yes. well, thank you. Have a good New Year's.